Hey everybody, welcome again to another one of my math videos. In this video, I'm going to go over condensing logarithms. Or in other words, I'm going to take many logarithms and simplify them and write them as one single logarithm. And I've just recently uploaded a video on expanding logarithms. And the properties that we needed to use for expanding logarithms are exactly the same as the properties we need to use for this video for condensing logarithms. However, in my expanding logarithms video, I used these properties to expand the logarithms as much as possible. In other words, I used these properties to take one logarithm and to rewrite it as as many logarithms as possible. And in this particular video for condensing logarithms, I'm going to use these same properties, but I'm going to use them to take multiple logarithms and to condense them and write them as one single logarithm. So let's get started right away with this example. Here we have 3 times the log of x minus 2 times the log of y. And the first step that we need to use for condensing logarithms is we want to use property number 3. That's our first step. We need to condense it using property number 3. And property number 3 is what I like to call the exponent property. And what that says is that if you have a constant being multiplied in front of the log, you can take that constant and you can write it as an exponent on top of the parentheses. And vice versa, if it's you know on top of uh, the parentheses, then you can take that exponent and you can bring it to the front and you can multiply it by the log. So using that exponent property, I'm going to take this 3 constant that's being multiplied in front of the log of x, and I'm going to bring that and write it as an exponent on top of the x. Now I'm going to do the same thing with 2 times the log of y. I'm going to take the 2 constant that's in the front, and I'm going to write it as an exponent on top of the y. Now our next step in order to condense these logarithms is we need to use properties 1 and 2. So that's our next step. We need to condense these logarithms using properties 1 and 2. Now because the two logs are being subtracted by each other and there is a negative sign in the middle, that means that we have to use property number 2. And property number 2 is, is that if you have two logs being subtracted by each other and there's a negative sign in the middle, you can write them as one single log using division. So in the property I wrote the log of c minus the log of d can be written as the log of c over d. Um, so in our particular example, we can imagine that our x cubed is our c, and we can imagine that our y squared is our d. So now we can take these two logs and write them as one single log. So they can be simplified and be written as the log of x cubed, which is our c, there is a negative sign in the middle. The two logs are being subtracted by each other, so we have to use division. And our d goes in the denominator, and our d, which is y squared. And we close the parentheses. Now we have condensed the logarithms as much as possible, and this is our final answer. However, the problems do get a little bit more complicated, so I want to go over a little bit harder example. So here we have 1 third multiplied by 2 log base 4 of x plus 3 log base 4 of y minus the log base 4 of z. And once again, our first step for condensing logarithms is we want to condense these logarithms using property number 3, or what I like to call the exponent property. And once again, the exponent property says that you can take the constant in front of a log and you can move it into the exponent position. So 2 log base 4 of x can be written as log base 4 of x squared. Once again, I'm going to do the same thing for 3 log base 4 of y. That can be written as log base 4 of y cubed. And there's nowhere else where we can use property number 3 at this point in the problem. So our next step in condensing logarithms is we want to condense the logarithms using properties 1 and property number 2. 
because the log of x squared is being added with the log of y cubed. In order to condense these two logarithms, I'm going to use property number one, which says that when two logs are being added with each other, they can be written as one single log using multiplication. And what property number one says is the log base b of c plus the log base b of d can be written as the log base b of c multiplied by d. So in this particular example, you can imagine that our x squared is our c. And you can imagine that our y cubed is our d. And before I simplify those two logs, I'll just rewrite my one third in my bracket. So we're going to take those two logs and we're going to rewrite them as one single log. And because the two logs are being added with each other, and we use property number one, we're going to multiply the x squared and the y cubed. And of course, we can't forget to subtract our log base 4 of z. So notice that we have two logs still that are being subtracted with each other. They have a negative sign in the middle. So we can still condense these logarithms using property number two. And what property number two says is that when two logs are being subtracted with each other, uh, they can be written as one single log using division. Uh, so we have the log of C minus the log of D can be rewritten as the log of C divided by D. So in our particular example, you can imagine that our x squared y cubed is our c. And you can imagine that our z is our d. And since they're being subtracted with each other, we can rewrite these as one single logarithm using division. Once again, I'll just rewrite my one third on the outside in my bracket. And I'm going to take my two logarithms and rewrite them as one single logarithm. I'm going to put my c in my numerator, which is x squared y cubed. And once again, because the two logs are being subtracted by each other, I'm going to write them as one single log using division. And I'm going to put my d in my denominator, which is just z. So at this point, you probably could tell that our logarithm is not completely condensed. Uh, we still have this one-third being multiplied in the front. Um, so in order to completely condense this logarithm and get rid of this one-third, we can come back to property number three, and we can use our exponent property to get rid of that one-third. So once again, using property number three, I'm going to take my one-third constant that's in the front of the logarithm, and I'm going to move it into the exponent position. So I'm going to simplify this even further, and we're left with the log base 4 of x squared y cubed all divided by c. And instead of using a one-third exponent, I'm going to use a cube root, uh, because a one-third exponent is exactly the same thing as a cube root. So instead of writing x squared y cubed over z to the one-third exponent, I'm going to write x squared y cubed over z as a cube root. Now we have completely condensed this logarithm into one single logarithm. So I hope this video helped you understand condensing logarithms just a little bit better. If you need any extra help with live tutoring or homework solutions, please go to my website at mathmeeting.com. Once again, mathmeeting.com, and I would love to help you out. Also, if you like my style of teaching and you want to see some more of my videos, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, follow me on Twitter, or like my Facebook page. That way you can see my videos as soon as I upload them. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and take care.